This is Dan. This is a lesson on a basic topic in computational number theory, also known as algorithmic number theory. But it'll be touching on anything in traditional number theory, and it'll cover a little bit on computational number theory. Today's lesson is on prime numbers, factors, counting factors, so how many factors there are of some number, for example. We're dealing with positive integers here. And the D function, which I'll get into after. First of all, in number theory, prime numbers are relatively important. If not, they're one of the most important aspects in number theory which come into analysis. A prime number is a number, say, n. So it's our integer n, which is strictly larger than 0, because n is in the positive integers, because we're only dealing with positive integers. And we only care about positive integers which have no other divisors except for itself and 1. And note, I mean and 1. The common misunderstanding of prime numbers is that 1 is a prime number, which is not true. A 1 is called a unit. Let me show you basically what I mean. Say, let's take a prime number. Let's take, say, 5, our number 5. So let's let n be defined as 5, where, where we have such an instance. How many divisors are there of 5? So we're going to be getting into factors, but for the sake of our argument, how many factors does this have? It only divides, let's try dividing up to it. We'll notice that if we do 5 divide, say, 0, that's not defined in, in arithmetic. We can't do that, since so a, because a divided by b in division requires b does not equal 0. You cannot divide by 0. The common misunderstanding that you can divide by 0, which is impossible. You can't do it. You can approach division by 0, but you cannot divide by 0. It's a common error. Okay, now when we reach... Apologize there. Okay, so let's try dividing by 1. 1 works, because 5 divided by 1 is 5. How about 5 divided by 2? Do we get a clean division? And when I mean by clean division, that we, when we take it and divide it, does it e properly divide it? So, as in, does, does 2 divide 5? This is a better notation here. And you'll notice this does not work. Whoops, not 5. It should be, this would be some floating point number, which doesn't cleanly divide 5. Then we go to 3, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, and then 5 divided by 5 is 1. So the only factors of this guy are 5 and 1, which we're going to get into a formal definition of what a prime number is, because it makes it a little bit more robust. So notice we have 2, and this is inside of a set. And our set of factors, we'll just call this D for our sake of, sake of convenience. We'll call the set D these two elements, 5 and 1, contained inside of D. So, now why is this all important? Well, counting factors is very important in terms of, say, encryption, cryptography, applying it to genetic algorithms, a whole buttload of different applications. And it's most, most especially by trying to develop some sort of pattern of primes and solving unknown number theory problems. Now, notice I had two factors on that prime number. What happens to prime numbers? Prime numbers only have two factors. The element, say your number, and one. And those are the only only things that are allowed. So, so you can say a prime number p, so we'll just say prime p, prime p, has to have two factors. So, so let's say the D of P, so the set of factors for a prime number, 
always equal p and 1. And then if we take the cardinality of the set, basically counting up the number of elements in that set, we get d of p equals 2, which makes clear sense. So now you know that the, there's guaranteed two ele elements inside of d for any prime number. If you're curious more about a proof for that, just ask me or send a message. Basically, I gave you the proof idea. Okay, so now we've got our definition of what a prime number is. Basically, something that isn't cleanly divi divided except for one in itself. Now, with factors. Factor, a factor by definition is something that divides the integer of that so that you get another integer so that you can multiply the two numbers together to get back to the original one. Say, then we have n, and let's say k, we'll say n is a positive integer, and we want to know a factor of n. Suppose k, which is some sort of positive integer, is a factor of n, so that there should be some sort of multiple of k or so, so that you can multiply it to get back to n. So, so we can think of this as k times d equals n, where n is some sort of positive integer. And this must hold to effectively divide an integer. And that's why factors are important, because every single one of these k's, so if we listed out k1, k2, k3, k4, kn, I mean KM. Let's use M, because we don't want to mix up variables here. So if we have ourselves a K1, a K2, all the way up to KM, we can call this the divisors of N. And if we know these guys, we can figure out the prime power decomposition of our given integer, which is very important encryption in cryptography and trying to crack encryption algorithms. But what is a prime power decomposition? A prime power decomposition is based on the principle and theorem that you can write in a unique sequence of products so that when you multiply them together you get back to the original integer and there's and there's only existent prime numbers that you can multiply them together. For example, 8 is 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which gets you back to 8. When we say multiply this by 3, our prime power decomposition becomes 2 to the power times 3. So now we have 18 is 2 to 3. And notice that if we order it in this fashion, we get a unique ordering. It doesn't matter, it'll always pop out as a unique one. This is usually called the unique factorization theorem, or the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. If this theorem didn't hold, say, to be able to write out a unique set of products of primes, arithmetic would not work. Because the essence on prime numbers, you use the prime numbers to build larger integers. Now, since we already went through what a factor is, a factor essentially is something we can cleanly divide. And now, how many factors are there for some integer? This is a good and in interesting problem. As you notice, we had, had for example, let's use 4. 4, we know, is 2 squared for a prime power decomposition. How many factors does this guy have? Well, you know that it's multiplied by two prime numbers multiplied together, so 2 times 2. So how many factors does this guy have? It has 1, because this is a composite number. Because you can divide, this is made out of prime numbers. A prime number cannot be created out of composite integers. 